your morning again. <sighs> oh my god, would you like to receive? No, I don't want any notifications. I'm trying to, um, I'm fighting with my computer again. <laughs> it's my hobby. I fight with my computer as a hobby. Um, so good morning and welcome to my YouTube channel where I talk about all things having to do with the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, and his beautiful wife, Meghan, Duchess of Sussex. And um, in this particular post, I mean, if you're new here, you know, what did I used to say? I've forgotten. If you're new here, welcome. <laughs> Consider hitting the subscribe button so that I can grow my side, especially if you are a Sussex squad or squatty. And um, even if you're not a Sussex squatty, I mean, look, I welcome everybody, you know, because I just feel like we're all human beings and we should all try to understand each other and to be reasonable and kind towards each other where possible and when possible. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, welcome. Anyway, Today I wanted to talk about Samantha Marco. I don't like to talk about Samantha Marco. It's she's not my favorite topic. I mean, there was a moment, a blip where I tried to understand her. I tried to understand her and her motivation and her humanity and so on and so forth. And there are a couple of posts or blogs or vlogs, whatever you want to call them, videos on my channel where I think you can see or hear that I did in fact try to to reach her to understand to to be human to be open minded towards her and her position her interpretation of the data and of the situation in which she finds herself and so on but I sort of moved away from that because I I have concluded that she cannot be reached she cannot be reached and she does not want to be reached. What she's doing is fully intentional. She means to do it. She wants to do it. She needs to do it. She craves it. And she's doing it because she wants to inflict humiliation and pain on her sister. This is my interpretation of the data that I'm looking at. This is my opinion about what I'm looking at with this individual. And hopefully I have the right in the United States as a citizen of the United States to have an opinion on the data, the, the media, the news, or anything at all that I encounter or experience on this earth. And that I also have a First Amendment right to say it's my opinion, hopefully, right? Can't be too sure about anything in these days, but hopefully. Now, that said, so I avoid talking about her because it puts me in a very negative place, right? But this morning I saw this. Thomas Markle and Samantha have disagreement about reconciling with Megan, says expert. And I thought that was really, really interesting because... I haven't really read the article, and unfortunately, or fortunately for me, I don't know what it is, which one, I also did not um, watch the, what is it, the docu-series, the documentary that Samantha um, and her brother and father recently did with ITV or whatever it was. I don't, I don't even keep track of the details. I have too many other things to worry about and to think about. But that said, I was struck by this expression of disagreement about reconciling with Megan because I wondered whether they're suggesting that a reconciliation with Megan is up to Samantha and Thomas Markle Sr. or Thomas Markle Jr. In other words, are they suggesting, I don't think they are, but could they possibly be suggesting that Megan wants to reconcile with these people, but that Samantha is 
having second thoughts or res she's having reservations. In other words, are we saying that Samantha is in the power position here? Is it up to her? Is Megan sort of like sitting in Montecito twiddling her hair and thinking, oh my gosh, how can I make up with Samantha? I mean, is that what they're suggesting? Could that possibly be what they're suggesting? Because that would just strike me as being incredibly funny. I mean, that would tickle my funny bone because the idea that Megan would want to make up with Samantha is just absolutely hilarious. I think it will be a cold day in hell before Megan reconciles with Samantha. Now, when you're dealing with families and when you're dealing with blood ties, it could be very complicated. You know, what you think could never happen can happen and quite often does happen. So I'm not going to say that it's impossible because it's not impossible that hell could have a cold day. Hell could snow, it could snow and probably does snow quite often in hell actually, like blizzards we have never even contemplated in our entire lives. So yeah, sure, anything is possible. And um, I think that, um, you know, it is possible that Megan could make up with her family and with Samantha, but I think it would take something really, really unimaginable at this point to, to get Megan to that point where she has enough, whatever that requires within the body, mind, soul, spirit, and just aura to, to contemplate forgiving Samantha, never mind reconciling with Samantha at this point. I think the point of no return has been exceeded by a lot in this case. I mean, half sister or no half sister, blood relative or no blood relative, it's been exceeded. And I don't anticipate that Megan will be able to forgive or is even thinking about it. I don't think she's even thinking about it. I think she's living her life. She's busy living her life. I think she has a very full life. She has a good relationship with Samantha's daughter. I almost said Samantha's half daughter. <laughs> it's not possible to be someone's half daughter, right? It's like you're the daughter or you're not. Um, you know, she, you know, Samantha has this daughter named Ashley. And it seems like, I mean, and, and kudos to Megan, because I don't know if I, I could have done it even with Ashley. I mean, I don't think I would have necessarily poor Ashley. I mean, I hate to say this and no offense to Ashley, but I don't know that I would have been able to trust her fully, you know, because in the end, I mean, it's her mother. Samantha is her mother. And where there's that much hatred from your mother going to somebody else some of that rubs off somewhere, you know, however deep down, you know, is that would sort of be my thinking rightly or wrongly. And I would be so incredibly, I, I'd be very, very reserved with Ashley, you know, because I wouldn't know whether, you know, after she visits me, you know, does she go home and text her mother? Is she in touch with her mother? Does she, well, yeah, I, I wouldn't trust her. I wouldn't trust her, but that's just me. You know, I, maybe I'm, I'm not very trusting, you know, maybe I could be more trusting, but you know, back to, to Samantha. I mean, I don't see Megan ever reconciling with, with Samantha. I, I think you know, the sister thing is done because, you know, it does happen sometimes in life, you know, I mean, you're a blood relative, but you know, so what, you know, what does blood have to do with it sometimes? Just like, what does love have to do with it? And in this case, I don't think it makes a big difference. I don't think Megan wants anything at all to do with Samantha. And I think she, with good reason, I think, may, I, you know, again, I try to see Samantha's side for a little blip, but now I say, keep your distance because anybody who can hate you to that extent to, 
to do what this woman has done. And in my opinion, that's hatred. That's my definition of hatred. That's my personal definition of hatred, right? Um, whatever her definition is, that's my definition. She hates her sister, in my opinion, right? Um, you can't undo that. That that's something's always going to be left, right? No matter what happens. And so it's better to keep your distance. You're safer, right? Not just physically, but emotionally and so on. They just do all this damage on you in one way, shape, or form. So that's sad. So that's what I wanted to say is that I think it will be a cold day in hell before Megan reconciles with Samantha. And, you know, I hate even having to talk about Samantha anymore because I think it really just takes up bandwidth and energy that I should be using to do something more constructive, frankly. But yeah, so that's it for this one. Um, let me know what you think about that. <laughs> See you in the next one. Take care. Bye.